And good morning. Once again, thanks for joining us on The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Let's go back a little bit um, in history to the year 1957 on the 12th of July. Uh, for, of course, uh, in recent times, you know, a lot of people have celebrated the uh, um, uh, uh, helicopters and the air, you know, crafts that carry the President of the United States. Uh, I know that I've seen a couple of documentaries on these things also. But it was on this day, in the tw on the 12th of July, 1957, that um, Dwight D. Eisenhower became the first president to ride in the newest advanced um, aviation technology, which was the helicopter. Although, of course, experimental military helicopters had been tested since 1947, it was not until 10 years later that a president considered using the new machine for short official trips to and from the White House. He suggested the idea to the Secret Service, which approved of the new mode of transportation, seeing it as safer and more efficient than the traditional limousine motorcade. During his second term, he used the Bell UH-13J uh, Sioux to fly the pres uh, to the presidential retreat at Camp David and to his farm also. Um, so basically, this is, was the day it started. But there's some, there's some parts of it that I want to also quickly share uh, concerning this story. Um, yes, you know, it was praised by other people. The Secret Service also enjoyed, you know, the fact that, yes, it was a more effective uh, means of transporting the president to and fro. Um, it also was um, safer um, based on the aviation records back then, you know, since 1940s when they had started flying. But first of all, the aircraft, you know, was purchased with about $201,000 back then. Mm -hmm. And then also it cost or it took the president only five minutes, you know, to move from uh, the, uh, where's this now, flying from the National Airport to the White House took five minutes, but if it was going to be driving, it took 10 minutes. But here's the thing, while, you know, the President uh, Eisenhower enjoyed all these privileges, there were still people who criticized the President for wasting taxpayers' money to save five minutes. So they basically were saying that, yes, he was trying to save time, but instead of, you know, him saving time, he's also also wasting taxpayers' money, to, you know, for his own little comfort. Um, and I'm pointing that out because I want us to reflect back here in Nigeria to see the amount of wastage of government funds that we think of every day for reasons that are not even as important hmm. as moving the president. And yet, you know, nobody even bats an eyelid. Nobody cares. National Assembly doesn't care. Nobody, you know, bothers themselves. But for those five minutes that the president was able to save moving from the airport to the White House, that was going to cost, you know, um, you know, maybe a little bit more because it was using a helicopter. Mm -hmm. They were um, people, the American public criticized the president for wasting taxpayers' money. I want us to always remember um, to have those things in mind when we hear about a renovation of the National Assembly that's going to cost billions of naira, where we hear of the number of aircraft the Nigerian president still has you know, mm -hmm. um, in, in service, where we hear the amount of money that it costs every state governor to move from one location to the other because they have to move in a convoy of about 15 to 16 vehicles, including armed you know, policemen and an ambulance and whatever else um, and all of that. Um, every single day that they wake up and breathe and do their uh, regular day-to-day -day activities, it's cost the Nigerian taxpayers millions and millions and millions of naira. And those are the things that we should imagine. And also the per diem and the um, um, number of aides that have to travel with a governor, with a president, anytime he has to go to the UK or go to some other country for some, you know, random flimsy thing. Whew. Interesting. Interesting. First sitting president to ever, you know, ride a helicopter. Yep. And yes, regarding that criticism about, you know, saving taxpayers money, it was a whole story. It was a, it was a whole big thing. Um, the White House Press Association did put out articles criticizing the president for this, you know, talking about how just because he wanted to save five minutes, you know, that he had to waste taxpayers' money. So, yes, it, it does make sense when you look at it, you know, in light of what's happening in Nigeria, how they go on medical trips, all expenses paid, taxpayers' money, yeah. you know, just the contrast is just starking. You know, just... I, I, I want everyone to look at I, I Just imagine what it costs every time that a, a state governor moves in Nigeria. Hmm. Um, and I'm, and I'm, I'm talking about the cost with regards petrol for all those SUVs. 
including the ones that security, you know, and, um, and police. And, and those are CVs that we've seen time and time again, in. that yes. they even kill people, cause accidents because they drive anyhow yes. and just blow their, si their sirens because they want to chase people off the road. So, so, so every time that the governor needs to move, they have to have that full convoy of about 12 to mm -hmm. 15 vehicles on the road, including the, the motorbikes, which always have to be. Maybe it's part of security protocol. But um, how, how, can you imagine how much it costs the state every time for four years that the governor moves around the state. That's an example of what we're talking about with regards to wastage of money. We're going to be bringing, um, one of the conversations we're having this morning, luckily, is on yes. uh, Nigeria's debt profile. And I'm hoping that we can get into, you know, talking about how the Nigerian politician himself, Nigerian state itself, continues to waste money in, and has no plans, has never even in any day imagined that maybe we should try to cut down on the amount of money it costs to run a government in Nigeria. No, no, no. The, the emphasis so should be on borrowing or would be on borrowing from their perspective Inside. because Nigeria is poor and does not have enough resources. I mean, that's what Ahmed Lawan said um, a week, some weeks ago. Um, moving on now to our next uh, big story, going back in time. Uh, on this day in history, the 12th of July in 2012, um, there was a very sad incident that occurred, a tanker explosion that killed, you know, tens and tens of people, over 100 people confirmed dead, and about 90-something, you know, non-fatal casualties in Okobi in River State, Nigeria. And what happened was that um, this tank explosion occurred because this truck was trying to avoid hitting a car or two other cars. And because of that, it veered into a ditch. It spilled its contents into the ditch and Nigerians all ran. You know, it's not today that we, we've, we've been hearing stories about Nigerians trying to scoop fuel yeah. from a, you know, a tanker that fell. So they began to scoop fuel and somehow, some way, you know, it, a, a fire was triggered and it just killed over 100 people. It's just a very sad incident. 121, incident. I think. Yes, 121. People. And that's according to statements from the Nigerian National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA. The Federal Road Safety Commission of River State gave the same figures that 121 people died. And um, that death toll was initially put at 95, but it was confirmed that 121. It just is a sad reminder of lots of things that are wrong with our country. First of all, the roads. Bad road was yeah. one. I mean, back then, you let's have seen the road then in River State, how bad it was, you know, and how trying to avoid hitting another car, trying to avoid that collision, and then the, the mentality of our people, the poverty. Because if those people were well-to-do, they won't be running to, skip, to, to scoop fuel. No. It's just so sad that this is something that happened in 2012, and this year, last year, we're still hearing cases about tanker fires and people getting burnt in the process. Yeah, so, so there, um, there is still that. Uh, um, um, I think, you know, you, you, um, with regards to these type of disasters, you know, and people and Nigerians making the similar mistakes, you know, I think the biggest one that has been in record, I don't think there's anyone that has been bigger than that, is the Jesse fire disaster that happened in Delta State in um, 1998. Um, about 1,078 um, people died um, on record. And that was, you know, after I think it was a pipeline explosion or a pipeline um, a leakage, I believe, that um, um, uh, people in, um, in Wari, in Jesse uh, community, uh, went to, of course, once again, scoop petrol. Um, and then, of course, there was an explosion. A thousand people died on that day. It's still a national disaster. But uh, the points to note are the fact that, you know, even in, in 2021, you will still see similar incidents. You will still see people um, rush into a tanker that, uh, that um, um, falls on the road to, draw, to uh, scoop uh, petrol or scoop crude oil, whatever it is. Um, that it is uh, carrying. So we still have those mistakes. We still haven't learned a lot of lessons. Poverty is, is still a major factor in some of all these things. Um, even if they know better, they should know better. And I know that they know better of how dangerous it is. But um, you can't tell a hungry man not to try at least, you know, some way that he can make some money or make some, you know, put food on the table. But yeah, um, sad story in Nigeria's history. 2012, uh, 100 uh, plus people died. 121 in people. 121. And of course, um, on this day also, in 1957, President Eisenhower took the very first uh, helicopter ride as the president uh, you know, in the United States back then. That's all we have for you today. Stay with us. Uh, we're moving into our first conversation, um, first major conversation. Nick Agule will be joining us to have a discussion on Nigeria's debt profile and where we might be headed with all these loans that we currently are taking and how we can in any way successfully pay back these loans. We'll be back.